Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today is just a very, very short follow up video uh, that's supposed to serve as a sort of clarification, not a complete clarification, but just a small addendum to the books and the GPL licensing agreement issue that I mentioned is a con in my latest uh, Note Air 2 review. A little while ago, I had a conversation with one of the viewers uh, who posted comments on the YouTube channel and he posted an absolutely awesome explanation as as I'm concerned and clarification regarding this whole issue with GPL licensing. What is a problem? What's not a problem? What should be done? What shouldn't be done? Etc. Etc. And considering that there's a huge amount of noise regarding this issue for a very long time and some of it is correct information but it's shrouded around a huge cloud of misinformation and plain wrong information. It's very very hard for users or anyone really to get a very clear picture and understanding understanding of what's going on, what's the problem, what does it all mean? And for me, this post was brilliant because it's summarized and in very, very nice clarity, all of it. And just because a form of a comment, uh, I think that this content is simply too important to be to remain just a comment. And the viewer kindly agreed that I am allowed to read out the email and share with you guys so that you also have that information should you be interested in this. Also, there's gonna be a bunch of links in the comment down below, like additional resources for for those who are interested to dig down this rabbit hole any deeper but I'm not going to be digging any deeper than this video as far as this rabbit hole goes because as far as I'm concerned this is perfect amount of clarity and clarification and pretty much all I need for those who are interested in more resources are of course available online and this is meant for people who are just wondering what is this all about or are a little bit worried simply because they don't know what this is all about and what does it all mean. So let's start reading the email and get to the clarification. Software licenses are part of my job, CTO uh, at a software company. While I'm not a lawyer, I have been forced to get a good understanding of the basics, although I still don't consider myself an expert still. Um, yeah, but as long as you're forced as a part of a job, then you gotta do it properly. And obviously this person has done that. So as stated in the Android frequently asked questions, they deliberately chose the Apache license as it is not copy left license like GPL for, for those that sharing the modification is requirement. Uh, this is exactly to convince as many vendors as possible to start using the platform. And, without, and this without running into the risk of getting in between the company own software or customizations, which would, for example, mean that a custom user interface like Samsung, etc. also have, would need to be open source as well. So that's something that makes perfect sense. Obviously, for a lot of vendors, this is an important sales argument and they would not want that. Hence the deliberate choice from Google to choose the Apache license for Android itself. So obviously that makes perfect sense. And that's a very important consideration to make a differentiation between Android licenses and the Linux kernel uh, licenses. So now we go to the Linux kernel itself is and remains GPL v2 obviously and this one really does require any modifications to be open sourced again under the same license. If Books is making modifications to the kernel itself, they definitely have to make it available again. And that's the one that's actually the issue. However, this does not mean that they have to post it online or make it available in a source code repository, although that's by far the easiest way to do it. If someone would send them an email or letter asking for the source code and they send it on a CD and charge for the costs of creating that CD and sending it out, that is perfectly fine according to GPL2 license. And finally, they can use a reasonable amount of time to create that source code package for whatever definition of reasonable. At this point, I cannot judge if books actually made modifications, most likely yes, and if they are sharing those modifications, yes or no. Nope, they are not sharing them, definitely. Has someone asked, have they been committed back to the Linux kernel? There's a follow-up email where this was clarified that indeed they are not sharing any of those things. Uh, or even just distributed as patches on a mailing list, I don't know. And that's the part I'm referencing too. I think this is the area that has to be addressed. And now this section is the whole 
clarification for me because this is where a lot of confusion and uh, gray zone is online as well. Where a lot of confusion originate is from that regard to embedded devices running a Linux distribution, which are mostly GPL. The software packages need to be considered as a whole and a source of the entire package must be available in source again. This is what happened with a lot of routers, TV set, top boxes, DVD players, etc. However, Due to the different licenses choices of Android and specific exceptions in the GPL license for the Linux kernel, uh, this is not the case for the firmware of Android devices. It is for the kernel, not for the rest of the firmware. So that I think is a very important differentiation that somehow got lost in majority of the yep, discussions that you can find online on this topic. And as a conclusion, I fully agree with you that they need to follow the rules of the licenses of the open source software uh, components they are reusing. And it is good that you're calling them out on it. However, it is not always obvious what needs to be done. And open source doesn't always mean that every modification needs to be open sourced again. So that clarification and division of what is uh, uh, what falls under the GPL v2 license and what doesn't is something that I really, really find valuable here. And the terminology that you're using with it being a law isn't 100% correct. I fully agree and I realized that only when I actually started editing, but by that time it was, um, yeah, it was very, very, very late. It was actually 2 a.m. So I couldn't really uh, fire up the camera and do a sudden recording with me looking like a zombie and stuff like that and do that correction. But yes, it is an important differentiation and I'm intended to put that as a pinned comment under the video but this video serves uh, that purpose better. So yeah, it's not a law, it's a licensing agreement, right? So the license builds on existing laws to set out the agreement, that's the licensing agreement, for specific open source license, but that doesn't make it a law in itself. Also an important differentiation, and thank you for pointing that out. So yeah, that's basically what I wanted this video to be. Also remember that I'm including all of the links and uh, yeah, the references, there's plenty of links that uh, this kind person has shared. And it's a very nice centralized way to uh, gather more information and get into the whole thing if you are interested more in that. As far as I'm concerned, for me, this clarified it perfectly. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this is as far as I'm going as far as this particular rabbit hole is concerned. So please do respect that. If you are interested in digging it more into this and inform yourself, by all means do so. That's why the references and the links are in the uh, description of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video helps shed at least some light and clarification on this really muddled up and kind of gray zone matter. Um, this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to touch it because it's just such a huge mess but uh, and unnecessarily so that's one of the reasons why I'm actually touching it because it's grown into this kind of huge mess and all they gotta do is release source code kernel source code modifications and basically adhere to the already listed license licenses in their devices, they, they list all the licenses, they're just not acting fully according in accordance to those licenses, uh, licenses and agreements. So yeah, they just got to do the whole thing 100% and then this whole mess goes away and the whole noise goes away and that's a good thing. So from now on, just so you know, until it's resolved, I will be mentioning it as a con in the uh, current and the other devices because I think it's something that really needs to be resolved. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.